Okay guys, welcome back to Strong Opinion Hibs. This is episode 9. I'm your host Calvin and as always I'm joined by my good mate and my co-host Charlie. Uh, and today we've got the pleasure of being joined by Liam and Owen, the guys from the Almond View podcast, the Livingston podcast. How are you doing guys? Not too bad, thank ah, you. Hey, all good, all good. Cheers. Cheers, right, cheers for having us on. Aye, right, good. Thanks for coming on boys. Uh, really looking right. forward to this one. Right. Uh, Charlie, how are you mate? Good mate, I um not, uh, I'm happy that Hibs got through in the cup, um, so delighted with that. But uh, apart from that, all good, mate. Aye, <laughs> aye certainly good. So, just a quick mention as always this episode is sponsored by High B Pins. Um, up for grabs this week was the Derek Riordan pin, um, it was a limited edition away top, away jersey version, and that was run, uh, won by a friend of the podcast, Andy Rogers, 1875. So, well done to you, Andy. We will get that posted out to you ASAP. Um, there'll be another couple competitions running shortly as well with more pins available to win there's a Russell Latapie one that's coming soon and also the Derek Arden one is still available so keep your eyes peeled in the Twitter feed for that uh, with a potential chance to win one of them so Charlie will you get you started uh, introduce the boys with the, the quick fire round I will do mate um, before we start Liam and Owen just uh, briefly how did you uh, get started doing your podcast? Um, well, I mean, it was sort of, it's one of these things that gets banded about a group chat for quite a while. Everyone mm-hmm. wants to start a podcast on something. Um, and there was only one other uh, lovely podcast at the time. And like, I, I listen to a lot of Scottish football podcasts and, you know, a lot of them, uh, in particularly the Terrace sort of cover mm-hmm every team which is great but a lot of the time you're listening to it and then when they got to talking about Livingston it was plastic pitch long ball and you're just like it's not that Mm. at all like and it's it's folk that watch sports scene highlights and listen to what McFadden's saying like it's yeah so we just started thinking fuck it like why not Um, can I swear on this by the way uh, I'm right to swear (laughs) As lo- I work mate, just be, just be yourself, I, mate. Just be yourself, I, mate. Whatever you feel comfortable with, mate. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer, mate. Whatever you feel comfortable with, mate. No, um, um, so I, and then uh, it was just an opportunity to interview ex-players as well. <laughs> oh, excellent, mate. That's really good of you. And uh, I think you listened to one of our episodes when we talked about that plastic pitch because, you know, Livy get a lot of, a lot of bad... Uh, yeah, a lot of stick for that, a bad reputation for that for that pitch. But me and Charlie were saying a couple of episodes ago, like we just don't buy that excuse eh? because mm. see down at the Hibs training centre, these mains they've got about four or five plastic pitches. So yeah. I hate it when they say that. Hey, eh? I just don't get it at all. Yeah, no, nah, I mean so, it's uh, it's a la- it's a lazy excuse from not so much Hearts and Hibs and Aberdeen, but from Celtic and Rangers in particular. Like Rangers fans are always moaning about it mm. they've beat us about five times at home since we've been <laughs> promoted like, <laughs> but they still find a way to moan about it and I'm like well you clearly are all right on it yeah um, right, absolutely bye that that was that was so I fell, fell in love with that like actually <laughs> it's weren't really that good rather than right. what was done to Livy's plastic pitch no man it's just a fact that like, they're professional football players as well eh? like I mean I've been I mean, we've all played football. I mean, we've all played on astral pitches. Like, I don't really see that much of a difference. Eh? Like, I just don't. I just think it's just crazy, crazy yeah. excuse. Like, 100%. I think maybe one of the biggest issues with Livingston's pitch is the fact that it's a lot smaller. Yeah. You know, Rangers and Celtic are used to playing on large, expansive pitches, whereas our one is actually quite narrow yeah. in comparison. Mm-hmm. Well, until you're standing on it. Once you're standing on it, it feels absolutely massive. But. Yeah. Uh, oh. But I think in terms of, I think that's probably where we are good because we we're quite compact as a team. Aye. Um, and uh, hard like, to break down. Eh? Firing round at hundred miles an hour. Yeah. So I think it's probably more to do with the size of the pitch than it is to do with like the actual pitch, what it's made out of in general. Mm-hmm. Aye, that's that's good. Uh, so the first quick fire question for you boys, um, we'll start with you on for this one. Who's been your standout player for Livy this season? This season, uh, Craig Sibbald. Craig Sibbald has been absolutely brilliant, I think. Um, he was a player that's kind of, he's been with us pretty much since we got promoted uh, to the Premiership. And he always played well against us again uh, for Falkirk. 
because you know we kind of <laughs> around the the Falkirk, uh, sorry, the the lower leagues, obviously. Um, but he's been an absolute revelation, especially this season where he's actually mm. been given a chance. Uh, it was it looked like he was leaving last January, um, and then just he, he got put into the team because um, oh who was it got injured? Liam? Uh, somebody got injured in the middle of the park. Robbie was it Crawford, Bartley? Maybe. No, no. Ah, it was Crawford. Crawford got injured, and uh, Craig Sibold was more of an attacking midfielder, and we just started playing him in that kind of one of those deep holding midfield roles, and he absolutely shone. And since then, he's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Aye. Well, yeah, I would say since since we got promoted, I would say Craig Sibbles one of those like one of the surprise players. I would say he loves a goal against Hibs as well. Um, that's uh, he sure. does. He always <laughs> plays really well against us. <laughs> Liam, I'm sure you... that. No. Aye. Who would you say, Liam? Uh, yeah, I mean Sibbles is probably. Yeah, I would probably agree that Sibbles the most standout. Uh, but when he was in the team. Scott Robinson as well, mm. um, but then since that we mm. sort of fourteen unbeaten run that we went on, he's sort of fallen out with the manager and is more than likely going to Motherwell because that's where every ex Livy player goes these <laughs> days. Um, <laughs> so he was like for that fourteen game run, he was unbelievable. But um, overall, probably Craig Sibold as well, right. Cool. I think the next question is probably an obvious answer, but uh, what's been your favourite all-time Hibs v Livy match? <laughs> uh, do you know I'm not I'm not actually going to use the, the cup <laughs> because I was twelve, I think, when we when we won the cup, and I expected mm. that from Livy. Right. I was like, oh, we should be winning this every year. Of course we won it. <laughs> it wasn't really like I couldn't really sort of take it in. Um, so. It was actually the, the first game of the since we got promoted recently, uh, the 2-1 game with, who was it that scored? Pittman scored the winner and Sean Byrne scored the equaliser because Hibs went 1-0 up and then we came back to win 2-1 and that, oh my God, because it's been about... <laughs> 50... Sounds like Hibs. I... <laughs> <laughs> I... Sounds it like Hibs. Was... <laughs> it was something like... <laughs> 14 or 15 years since we last beat Hibs. Wow. And it wasn't because we hadn't been playing each other. It, like We'd went through the championship and stuff and just could never get a result with, against them. So that was that was probably one of my favourites. Like, Quite. Oh, and have you got a different one or are you sticking with that one? Or? That's a total cop-out. 2-0 CIS Cup Final <laughs> 2004. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a horrible day that for us, man. I remember oh. getting... Yeah, I think my brother got chips and curry sauce for one of the vans outside and like spot it all doing himself before the match even started. It. You just knew it was going to be one of those days for the get go. It was just uh, like I think family we, arguing and that. But the thing is, though, we've always had very, very entertaining games. Uh, I mean, one that instantly sprung to mind as well was the it was the Easter Road Cup Cup game. We were still in the Championship at the time. Uh, Hibs won three two thanks to oh, um, that's right, um, two two goals from Bobby Madden. Uh, basically, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, but that was a really entertaining game for you know as as Livy fans going one nil up then going two one up and yeah. you know it was it was just just that that championship season for us was just amazing it was like we could literally beat anybody right now mm. uh, was kind of mm. the feeling uh, I see unfortunately it took Bobby Madden to give away the, <laughs> probably one of the most dodgiest penalties you've ever seen. Hi. And then a corner, which was clearly a goal kick <laughs> from which a goal was at. But, you know, I'm, I'm not bitter about it in any way. <laughs> <laughs> this is about five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you just can never let it go. Uh, <laughs> I think, but I mean, without a doubt, like I'm, I'm a wee bit older than, than Liam. Uh, so I, I remember the, well, I, I remember bits of the CIS Cup final because I was absolutely steaming. I was only 16, but I was absolutely steaming. <laughs> Um, Aye, that was a that was a bad day yeah. for us, but a good day for you. Uh, um, it was crazy, man. I think I was nine at the time. <laughs> it's brutal, man. <laughs> that was my first time at Hamden as well, and I was like, I'm never going back there. But, uh, <laughs> well, see, see pretty... for me, that was I'd, I'd been to Hamden numerous times, but to watch Levy against Queens Park, yeah. I think that was, that was uh, <laughs> one of the big high. Uh, I think we'd been in a semi final against. I was against Hibs before I got yeah. absolutely tried. Oh, that's right. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah. 
Aye. Uh, I couldn't so remember I, if it was Hibs or Dunfermline. Sorry. Aye, I think that was 2001, was it not? Yeah. Aye. Aye. We got pumped off Celtic in the final that day. The <laughs> final. Day. So next <laughs> next question, second last quick fire one. What's been your favourite player to play for both teams? You go first, one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's we did that wee segment on ours before. Aye. Um, so it's it's. I can't even remember who it was that I even chose. Oh, I chose Andy McNeil or something like oh, that. Aye. But. <laughs> he was shite um, probably Stuart Lovell at Stuart the end Lovell. you know Stuart Lovell to be captain um, and just from what you know with the interviews with all the ex-players that we've had on anyone who played with Stuart Lovell usually has him somewhere mm. in the team um, mm. just because although they, they always say his legs were gone by the time he got to us but he just basically stood in that centre circle and he Die. dictated everything that we did so Stuart Lovell and and of course for that overhead kick against Rangers as well, you can't you can't you see much more yeah. than that really. <laughs> uh, I've just remembered mine. Lee Griffiths has to be. Yeah, has to like, be. He like when he sort of broke through. There was like he, he started coming through over like a couple of seasons, but it was his last season. Was I think he scored? He was injured for like half of it, and he still scored like twenty old goals. Um, but it was one of those that we could go 2 0 down, and the whole I say the whole stadium, the whole stand at Levy would be like, It'll be fine. It was got Lee Griffiths, and he would just Aye. go, and that would be at like last 10 minutes. He would just run, beat 10 players, top net, then we'll get a free kick, scores the free kick. Like, he was just one of those players that we would just, you just knew that he was going to produce at least something, like one chance and he would take it. Um, exactly. So, yeah. I, I would probably say him. He's probably one of my favourite ever Levy players, um, to be honest. Yeah, I loved him. Did you still feel a connection to him? Like, do you know when he scored those two goals against England? Oh. Is that like, because for, for us, like, see when, <laughs> when we watch Scotland and there's like, no a player that's like, almost directly related to Hibs. Hmm. It's quite hard to engage, like for me personally, like, but seeing the guys like John, I don't know if you know John again, played for Hibs, but he's in the uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> bench all the time. Did I did that at some point, did he? He's a good player, like. I heard, um, I heard that Hibs are probably trying to sign his fucking mo next, man. That's like, I can't, to, I, they sign everyone else. That's our youth academy. <laughs> She's our youth academy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, seeing guys like that in the team, like. Um, John McGinn or Griffiths, for example, even though they're no longer with us, with us, you know, it's still still folk you look out with. Do you feel like that way, Griffiths in the in the Scotland team when he's in and out? Of it? But I I remember I was at the the England game and uh, it, like the group that I went with, we were all Livingston supporters, and I was Aye. stood next to my pal Heggy, and uh, when Griffiths like stood over the first free kick, I I just remember like we both were just like. That is what I remember. That is what I remember Aye. of it. Him like just, oh yeah, it, that was amazing. And like seeing, in particular, when Robert Snodgrass and uh, Graham Dorans were in the squad as well, because it was so quick after they left Livingston, they were like Jesus. Like we are actually, like I tell my wee cousin in England, when you know Robert Snodgrass was one of the top boys down in the Premiership, and I was like, he started mm-hmm. at Livingston, and he's just like, nah. Mm-hmm. Don't believe you. <laughs> like, so that's the thing. Like, we don't keep a hold of these players for very long. Mm. But yeah, uh, like even similar. Dykes now, like seeing Aye. Dykes. Crazy, scoring, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's just amazing, like knowing that we've been such a, a huge part in him getting to where he is. Mm. Uh, so I definitely still have that connection. I would say for myself, I feel more of a connection to Dykes than I do to Griffiths, just purely because. Dykes went straight from us to essentially play for Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas with Griffiths, it was like he went from us to Dundee, from Dundee to Wolves, you know, and then it was it wasn't until sort of quite a wee bit later that he started appearing in sort of Scotland squads uh, I- and stuff. So for me, it was like I'd by that point I'd I, I genuinely forget Lee Griffiths even played for us. Yeah. <laughs> like it's almost to that sort of stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, however, with Snodgrass, I'll always remember that Snoddy played for us uh, mm. because, like Liam said, it was very quick to him going down south to then 
starting mm. to appear in, in the thing. So, uh, quite yeah. interesting. Uh, he used to play for, he actually played at, at Leith Athletic with my cousin, my cousin David Patterson. And then the both of them actually went to go have trials with Livy, but my, my cousin never made it, but Griffiths did. Strange, small world. Well, that was, yeah. um, yeah, small it was, world. It was John, I remember John Hughes said something about like Griffiths going to Livingston, and I'm pretty sure. He said that I think he tipped Livingston off to him. Mm. So, or I think he was mm. maybe trying to get him for Falkirk and then ended up at Livingston. And then John Hughes, being John Hughes, was like, Oh, you'll never make it now that he's went to Livy instead of coming to me, sort of thing. So, <laughs> but now nah, he said that even in those days, though, like he was just totally erratic. Mm. <laughs> so, it's like, <laughs> it's one of those that when, aye, when he's got his head on, he is just unplayable, and those oh. two goals, as you mentioned, against England, sort of prove that. Uh, I hope, I hope he can get back to it, and he'll probably be back at Hibs next that's season. The, that's that's the, the, hopefully, new, hopefully, hope aye. So, aye, he'll probably get the best out of him. I take him so. back in a flash, like aye, yeah. definitely. So, boys, last right. swap deal for uh, for Nisbet, probably. They can, <laughs> aye, they can take him yeah. if they want. <laughs> 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 so, last last question, um, and it's going back to when you were at school. Uh, do you think that you were in the minority at school supporting Livingston, or do you think you your school was majority Livy fans, or how how well, was school for you? We both went to school in Edinburgh. All oh, right. Um, All right. <laughs> to be fair uh, though, I, I I don't remember a single Hibs fan at school. Really? See, that's the same thing. That's why I've asked you that question because I was I, obviously I I, I live just outside Edinburgh, some of hmm. um, It's like ten minutes outside Edinburgh, and I was one of two Hibs fans in my year. Like was the, the majority same. of them are all Celtic and Rangers fans. It's crazy. Yeah. So I th- sorry, I thought you guys would be a lot more sort of uh, well, dominated by me, that. Eh? It to was be fair for me, I, there was there was more Hibs fans in my year because I, I, we went to Palermo. So right, right. Um, ah, right, yeah. So there was definitely. I, I think there was like one other Livy fan in my year, if I remember rightly. Um, there was definitely a couple of other Livy fans in the school. But there was definitely a because again, I'm, I mean, how many we're going to need a chalkboard for how many times I'm going to mention it. But after the CIS Cup <laughs> final on the Monday morning, <laughs> I, I walked into the concourse at Balerno with my with my with my non-regulation school Livingston scarf, you know, <laughs> you just had to. Uh, and I just remember giving people pelters for it all the time. It was, mm. it was, but it was mostly Hearts and Hearts and Hibs fans yeah. that I was right. Uh, now nah, for me. The, the majority of my year at school were Man United fans. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> just one of those, like, or Chelsea, or that was when, like, the, the premiership down in England was really starting to get a stranglehold of young minds up here. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. but I, a lot of Rangers and a lot of, um, a lot of English teams, but I think there, there's one guy in my year, Daniel Tilbrook, um, that he he became like a Hibs fan after we left school, so I never really I just I never had so when we won the cup in two thousand four, like folk just didn't even know that Livy had won it in my year. It was, <laughs> it, was like, uh, it was weird. Like folk were like, oh, "What'd you do at the weekend?" I was like, "I went, I went to a cup final." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was on telly. Like, how did you not know this was happening? But because Celtic and Rangers weren't in it and. Mm. Aye, so like aye, Sheffield United v Man U was on the telly that night that folk just didn't know. So, yeah, aye, I, I actually probably knew more Levy fans at school than uh, Hibs. So I'm probably the opposite to one. Yeah, no, that's, right. that's cool. Well, I'll pass over to Calvin for the next week's segment section. I just to, um, sort of round up the season so far. So both teams have actually had really good seasons. You know, you managed to make it to to the cup final where you were unlucky to to lose out. And then, um, obviously, you've been on that good run as well. You're on beat and run you went on. And we've had a good season as well, sitting third. Um, did, did you predict to be where you are before the season? So where did you think Livy would finish when the season started? Well, I, rem- I remember pre-season, uh, one of the boys in our group chat, Lee Hamilton, he, a brilliant guy, but he was saying, he looked at our squad and he was like, yeah, we'll be top six. And I think everyone was saying 100% we'll 
Then the season started, <laughs> and we were playing F.A. Ambrose at left wing. <laughs> in, like, like, Craig Sibbled in goal and stuff like that. You know, like, what's going on? And, I mean, the I, I, I can't remember, was it the second or third game in the season where Hibs came and just mm. completely annihilated us? And we looked... I, I remember saying that day, I was like, we're getting, we are getting relegated because mm. there, is, there was nothing there. Um, so from that point to now, it's just mental. I mean, losing Dykes was obviously a massive blow. Aye. Mm. Um, but as I said, like Robinson came in for those 14 games after Holt left, it, it completely changed. Um, and... It's one of those that we, we sort of feel quite cheeky because we do a lot of moaning on our podcast about Livingston mm-hmm. recently because it's two wins and ten. Mm. Then you're like, we're still fifth in the league. Like, mm-hmm. it, it sort of feels, see if those if that 14-game run was sort of divided over the season, we would probably be a lot happier. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, aye. but I think it's when you go on a run like that and you can see what the team can do and then seeing them now where it's getting back to like what it was at the start of the season you're just a bit like fucking what's going on man like Aberdeen mm-hmm. yesterday there for the taking they've been there for the taking all season for fourth place and whenever aye. they stumble we stumble um, but overall I mean if you offered me a cup final and fifth place at the start of the season I would have laughed in your face to be honest <laughs> like I would have mm. bitten your hand off um, the cup final though that was you said we were unlucky we were not unlucky we were horrendous that day that was just like St Johnston went in amazing but mm-hmm. we gave it to them on a plate like, and we deserved to lose it I remember not even being that angry because I was like you can't perform like that and think that you can win trophies so for me sorry I'm sort of rambling a wee bit but um, no not at all mate aye, for me it's been overall amazing fifth place again more than likely cup final was brilliant uh, to get there but sort of the in between is much better than the start and the end <laughs> like, so that 14 aye. games was brilliant but everything in, like after and before that was just pretty turgid to be honest I, and uh, Owen, what's your thoughts on that, mate? Did you uh, think you would be where you were, or you have, as love has surprised you this season, or <laughs> very, mm-hmm. very surprised, very, very surprised. I think um, for Liam saying there that that, that his pal Lee, uh, well, he's he's in our group chat anyway, uh, was saying that we'd finished top six. I think I was one of the very few that probably said not a chance. You know, you look mm. at our squad, and it's like who are half of these players that have come in, you know, like fucking, uh, was it Salim Kudaresa from Queen's Park? Yeah, signing of the season, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just, I never expected to be where we were. Um, and after yesterday as well, I, one of the first things that I put on the group chat was how on earth have we finished in the top six, like genuinely. But during that 14 game unbeaten run, we were genuinely unbeatable. It was just mm-hmm. for some reason, something's just clicked off. And uh, going from scoring an absolute, like a last minute winner, like literally in the dying seconds of the game against Kilmarnock and what a, what a finish it was from, uh, from Scott Robinson. Like, how on earth have we managed to go from that to then trying to mark Sean Rooney out of a game playing Marvin Bartley at left wing? Like, how have, how have we gone from this to this in, like, the space of about three or four weeks? Like, I don't yeah. get it. Um, so, th- to basically answer your question, no, I didn't expect to be there. And to be honest, I'm very, very surprised that we are. Aye. No, I think I think he's had a really good season, to be honest with you. I- when me and Charlie were talking about the the last Livingston game we had, the one one draw, we were sort of saying, well, Livingston for me when I was younger, it was a team that was sort of flirting with you know the SPL and then the championship, so they were up mm. and down, up and down, a bit like a yo-yo. So it was kind of surprising. I thought they would have sort of been bottom six, like top best of the rest, sort of seventh, eighth place. But no, they've definitely surprised me this year, especially with that three 0 defeat 
um, I think it was at Easter Road, you beat us 3-0. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Because it's games like that, we, we'd be we'd be expecting to win or hoping to win mm. without sounding uh, disrespectful, but uh, we slip up on a lot of games like that. Uh, and I think that's what sort of put even more of a gap between us and Celtic this year, because if we could have been a little bit more um, sort of, re- not reliable, but a little bit more consistent, Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of games we could have picked up extra points because I mean Celtic are so poor this season, yeah. um, especially if I don't know if you've seen the match today, but I mean just god awful, like so so bad. So bad. <laughs> but um, no, what what was your sort of opinion? Just uh, interesting to get like an outside view. What was your sort of thoughts on Hibs? Would you sort of expect Hibs to finish each year? Uh, it's probably not something you think about, but no, I mean, you know, do you... six. Under us, basically. <laughs> I think, like, for me, I mean, I'm, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot more heart supporting pals than Hibs. Me so and all. <laughs> I've, I've actually got, like, I sort of, I like the idea of Hibs doing okay because it really winds them up. Um, <laughs> because they are sort of the, they love the. Mm-hmm. It's the boys from um, the. This is my story podcast in particular. Like they're just so. They love thinking that they're the big team and that. And I'm like, I can live have finished above you, like two, <laughs> three seasons in a row. Um, for me, Hibs have always been. I don't. Know, it's weird like that. The when I first started going to games, they were I, they were a bit of a yo-yo between the bottom six and third. They never seemed to do Aye. anything else. It was always either third place or like eighth, nothing. And um, mm. yeah, I've always, I just find it strange in particular that like, as you said, that consistency, when they came to Livingston this season at the start and beat us 4-1, it was like, Jesus, this is a, this is a brilliant Hibs team. And sort of Aye. looking more like that sort of Mowbray era of brilliant football and then it's sort of a it's a Jack Ross thing I think that I think he starts to panic a wee bit when he's getting a lot of praise <laughs> and then he's like oh fuck like this is like I'm actually expected to do a lot better now and then that's when things like he, the results against the old firm from a Hibs perspective I imagine has probably been quite disappointing in particular at home Aye. um Really poor, mate. It's been really poor over the last. Have you beat Celtic this season? Yeah, no. No. We were we were two 0 up at Easter Road. We drew two two. That was it. Well, like the last couple seconds or something. It's just like, as I say, like typical Hibs, eh? Yeah, I mean, Uh, and then us going, it's like us going to Easter Road and winning three 0 Like again, as you said, it wasn't really that much of a shock. Like we knew how good Livy were, but then we also knew how. Poor Hibs could be. Yeah. Uh, it's like like folk who are sort of texting like other like pals of mine that support Rangers or Celtic and they're like, oh my god, like Livia are beating Hibs three now. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's like like there wasn't it's not much of a shock because it was just so inconsistent for a yeah. while. But he's have started sort of turning a corner. And I think next season I think Hibs will probably be up there again. Like I can't really see Motherwell challenging Aberdeen unless they get a 20 goal a season mm-hmm. striker they're not going to get anywhere back near them so I think uh, I can see Hibs sort of pushing on a wee bit especially with big daddy Gordon flinging the millions Aye, hopefully hopefully, <laughs> hopefully could, could do we bring in the jet I think maybe that would be alright <laughs> take them Fuck it, honestly <laughs> Take him, take him now, take him now, <laughs> take him for the rest of the season if you want, mate. <laughs> Actually, there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff going on Facebook this morning. A lot of uh, speculation, folks saying, "Is that someone we should be looking at?" But um, so apparent, apparently he's he's definitely away next season, but he's still he's still living off his name a wee bit. So right. apparently he's going abroad for like, but it, when you say abroad, it'll be China. Iran, ah, somewhere yeah. like that, like nothing major. I think, um, like yesterday was the best game he's ever had for us, and Aye. but he has been a passenger 
the majority of his time at Levy. Uh, but well. yesterday and a couple of weeks ago against Hamilton, it was brilliant that goal that he, he scored against Hamilton. But, but nah, I think Hibs should probably be looking at someone better <laughs> than the Jets. Uh, I know, I, 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 there's a lot of this morning going about sort of Facebook and that. Eh? Um, do you sort of share the same views, Owen, or are you a wee bit different? Um, sort of when you think of Hibs, do you think, you know, me and Charlie, like we've talked about it, and we've talked about Hibs fans in general sort of like trying to realign their sort of expectations because a lot of the time we think we are a big club. Then not get me wrong, we are in terms of, you know, being from the capital, we're one of the big teams in Scotland. However, me and Charlie have talked about, you know, where's the evidence to say that Hibs should finish third? Because a lot of our fans think, oh, we should be finishing third. We should be up there with Aberdeen. But, I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at look over it in, in my sort of lifetime, I mean, it, just as Liam said there, I mean, Hibs have either been on course for third and doing really, really well, or we've been eighth. Like, there, yeah. there's no in-between. As you said, it's a really good sort of way to sum it up. But what's your sort of thoughts on that? Uh, well, growing up, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was a heart supporter until 1995, so... You know, mm. <laughs> I've got certain feelings that way. But, like, I remember when Hibs were relegated uh, under, was it Alex McLeish? Like, I, like you know, I remember that happening, and I remember what a big deal that was. Um, when, when I do think of Hibs, I think of Hibs as one of those teams that, like, I, you know, again, as a, as a Livingston supporter, one of those teams that, yeah, we could get a result here, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got beat. Um, yeah, sort of thing. Uh, I definitely do think of Hibs as one of the bigger teams. Like I don't, I don't consider Motherwell a big Scottish team. Like you know, and they finished third for right. third, fourth, whatever for however many seasons. Um, but I think Hibs are very, very well supported as well. Um, I think, like Liam was saying though, like Livingston fans, we start saying stuff like, you know, oh, we should be doing better and all this sort of thing, and it's like. You know, we are probably like between a bottom two premiership team and a sort of you know third or fourth championship team. You know, that's that's realistically yeah. what we are. And football fans are fickle, so they just they just want to win every single week. I mean, we all want our team to do well, but um, I think it's it's all just you know everyone's mentality is different. You know, I don't expect Livingston to win the league, but like the Premiership anyway, but you'll have some Hibs fans and Hearts fans and Aberdeen fans out there that are like, yeah, we can win the league, the league this season. It's like, come on, you've got no chance. You know, it's like, uh, nah, totally, totally. way too high. Um, I think it's one of those, you need to sit back for a few weeks. Like when the season starts, it's like, okay, you got a decent run of results. You can sort of assess where you are and then you can kind of go, right, okay, you know, we, you know, be looking top six or bottom six at that point. And then as the season grows on, then you can start putting um, right. sort of things on. Like there's so many, like in our group chat again with the with the guys from the podcast, you know, they're, they're, they're like they're quite disappointed. It's like, you know, oh, we, we're going to finish fourth in that. It's like, I don't care if we finish fourth. You know, I'd quite like to stay where we are, but I can't see us winning a game for the rest of the season. You know, right. so if we finish fifth or sixth, it doesn't really matter. We, you know, the, the money's there. I'd rather we tried to push to finish fifth for just slightly more money. But you know, yeah. look, I mean, looking in as a, a, a two Hibs, Hibs are definitely to me they are one of the bigger clubs. They're definitely bigger than than Livy, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, I don't know if right. that even answered your question. No, it did so, answer. <laughs> I think uh, when we were thinking at the start of the season, like Hibs have surprised me. Like I didn't think we would finish third, just because, as you were saying, it's that level of inconsistency over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really think Hibs are more sort of like I, I sort of expected us to finish fifth or sixth this year, fourth, fifth or sixth. You know, ne- never third because it's like we could. But I, mean, I mean, I think it was something like Jack Ross said in his lifetime, Hibs have only ever finished third four times, which is that's, like for, that's for, bizarre for me. For a um, club our size, yeah. is, you know, it is quite a striking fact when you hear that. But when you look back over the years, you think there's been a hell of a lot of bottom six finishes in that for, our, for ourselves. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not really that surprising. But yeah, no, interesting to hear your thoughts on that and sort of like what other sort of teams think when, when they come to play Hibs. But um, 
We'll jump into this weekend's fixture, just looking back on the past couple of fixtures we've had. Um, obviously, there was that 4-1 win Hibs had away to Levy back in August. And then, you know, you humped us 3-1 at, uh, sorry, 3-0 at Easter Road. And then the, the match just a couple of weeks ago uh, was one apiece. So, as you see, there's quite high scoring matches um, so far. What's your predictions going in for the weekend? Uh, sorry, for Wednesday night. I think for the way Livy are playing at the moment, it's it's difficult. But then we've like Hibs are uh, Hibs haven't beaten us at Easter Road since we've been promoted, so we've got that wee psychological edge. Uh, a lot a lot of draws in that though. Um, I think we've only won once, but like the other five games have been draws. I think, but. I think Hibs are starting to get a wee bit of momentum going, especially like winning four 0 today. Um, we we are just hemorrhaging goals at the minute, um, and not scoring many. We managed to score two uh, yesterday, which like we haven't done on a consistent basis for a long time this season. Um, so yeah, I just. I can see it being quite high scoring again. It might. I'd love another sort of like two-two draw or something, like just an entertaining game. Because now we're Hibs are pretty much wrapped up third. We no, I don't know. Yeah, it's Hibs. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not sure either. <laughs> I can't. I can't see Aberdeen doing anything. To be honest, they're just. Aye, they steamed poor last night. Aye. Um, so, I th- I'm, yeah, Levy are sort of limping towards getting over the line for fifth place so there's not a hell of a lot to play for um but then the Hibs players as you said earlier he's got through in the cup every player wants to play in the cup especially a game against Dundee United that's so winnable to get a chance to get to Hamden again so it's mm. one of those that, and you know Levy literally have nothing really else to play for anymore so it could be a total dead rubber routine 2-0 for Hibs uh, yeah. but again it just sort of depends what Livy turn up if Livy turn up then could hopefully sneak a draw I reckon but nah I can see it probably being routine for Hibs uh, It is Easter Road as well and our record hasn't been great there this year so mm. I don't know if that'll have an effect in it as well. Well, what's your prediction for the, the score on Ben tonight mate? Uh, well, as Liam says, we're hemorrhaging goals, uh, so there's definitely not going to be a clean sheet. We haven't kept a clean sheet now in 11 games in the, on the trot, and that's wow. between two different goalkeepers. Um, with the same John Guthrie in the centre of midfield, uh, sorry, the centre of defence, which is, you know, apparently he's meant to be a top-class English championship player. Um, so I, I, I can't see, I can't see it being nil-nil. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, or mm-hmm. or Livingston x Hibs nil. I can't see that happening. Uh, as Li- as Liam says as well, it depends on which Livingston turn up. Um, we were once we sort of confirmed top six, we were promised to see something different. You know, like oh, he's going to try out. You know, Martin Dale's going to try out new stuff, and it seems as though the only new thing which he's tried out is to put Jet on the right wing instead of playing them up front. That seems to be the only change which we seem to have made. Um, mm. So I see. He seems to have come off the boil a bit, Martin Daly. I, I don't think it's Martin Daly as such. I think the... I mean, the players did enough to get... I mean, you got to as well look at it. We went through a period of playing... Like, during that 14-game unbeaten run, we were, you know, we were almost... At, we were playing every Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday... Mm. Before, because we had the, we, you know, we, we were still in the Betfred Cup run as well, so we, we just, we, I think the players are absolutely shattered, but we don't mm. do terribly well after international breaks either. So then we had a couple of international breaks in all this, and we've just, we've just faltered completely. Mm. It just seems <laughs> to shat the bed, really. Um, mm. So if I was to give a score prediction. I would like to see us score, but I reckon it will probably be quite similar to yesterday. We we could probably score first reasonably early on, but then I reckon it will be two, two or three to Hibs, I reckon. So either yeah, right. one or... I right. think I'm going to go for a... What do you think, Charlie? 
Uh, it's a hard one because it, dep- it also depends on what Hibs team turn up. Because we, we're Aye. very inconsistent at home. So I, th- I think we'll win 2-1, but I think it'll be a very, very entertaining game. I think Livy will bring the game to mm-hmm. Hibs, you'll bring the game to yourselves. And I, 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 think, I think Hibs will win because we've got that wee bit more to play for. But mm-hmm. I do think it'll be an entertaining game. I think um, I think it may be one 0 Hibs. I think Hibs will win, but I do think that Livy are quite quite a solid team, quite a tough team to break down. Uh, they're quite they seem quite physical, especially with Bartley and that in there as well. Uh, I think they're a, an awkward team for Hibs to play against, especially the way we sort of like to pass the ball and you know got a lot of sort of pretty players like um, Irvin in the middle mm. and um, Newell as well. You know there there isn't really that hard man that sort of is there to put up a fight as well. And yeah. I think that's where Livingston seem to be, you know, quite quite tough to beat in terms of the, the physicality they do have in the middle of the park and their defence as well. But I think Hibs will sneak it. I do think they'll sneak it. But uh, I think Hibs, if Hibs can win this one, then I think that will be th- uh, third place secure. But um, I'm still not sure. <laughs> I think this is... A, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... No, nah, I, th- I, think, I think so, mate. But I... I, I I've... <sighs> I'm starting here eh, because I actually don't know, eh? Like, it's aye. so hard to predict with Hibs. I mean, I've seen it all before, eh? Aye. Um, aye. You've got so, to remember, though, Aberdeen have got to play Celtic and Rangers. Aye, that's true. Like, I know, and... And, they, your, and the yourselves. Tor- like, aye. They notoriously aye, shit the bed the against... The, <laughs> they'll get the points against us. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but no, nah, I mean, you've... Aye, I, th- I think he's a... Is it, well, in particularly you, Charlie, I think you're worrying about nothing, man. It'll be fine. Uh, I, think <laughs> I, I think I've just, just because I've seen it all before, eh? Like, it's one of these uh, things where just... if we were playing for fourth, I'd be a lot more confident we're going to finish there. But mm. uh, I think, I think, beat, I think, win one of our next two games and I'll be more confident. Win both of them, yeah, yeah. And then we're flying. Well, I've got third no. left up, but, but I, I just think it's amazing to think, like, you're, ne- you're never, Hibs never fail to amaze you, like how rubbish they are, <laughs> or like, how, or like how, how poor they can be. Oh, I, I mean, like, Hibs are the type of team, like, this is going to sound stupid, but like, if we were playing Real Madrid, like, we'd put in like a hell of a shift and we'd maybe, like, we'd maybe, we'd maybe get beat 2 1 or something like that, right? <laughs> but then we could turn around the next game, we can play Montrose and we'd get gubbed 4 0. Like, it's just it's like that, like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> That's very much how I feel about Livingston as well, Aye. though. Like I think, yeah. think although although we beat his three 0 at Easter Road, the game before we probably lost like two two one at Hamilton. Like you know, yeah, so unpredictable. We should be beaten. Uh, yeah. By yeah. the end of the day, I would. I mean, you know, I wish he's well, but I, I would love to see Jack Ross's face if he finished fourth. <laughs> uh, I don't think Jack uh, Ross will still be miserable. Gubba has. I don't think uh, he'll still be here. <laughs> If we finish Thorf, I think he's out. Um, I think really? a, lot of, a lot of supporters were calling for him after some. Nah, they'll, not, they'll not have that. Nah, to be a, Johnston, be a big... you know, when when they beat us at Hamden, everyone, well, ninety five percent of Hibs fans wanted him out, and I think if we can go being seven Cleary Aberdeen to throw it away and finish fourth, I think, I think he'll be out. But I tell you, sir, though, if there's anyone who can do it, it's Hibs. Aye. <laughs> to, to, to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Aye, right. it's true. Well, boys, we'll, we'll look ahead to your your final four games, uh, the split. So obviously, you you will not even speak about that game at Celtic Park because that was an embarrassment <laughs> for from me as a Hibs fan watching that. Like, how did Celtic do that? Because I've never seen that all season. But so pish. Obviously, if Ambrose, that's what happened. He was only on the pitch for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take our game out of the equation because we've really spoken about that. So. You've then got Aberdeen, then Rangers, then St Johnston. How many points do you expect that you'll take? If I'm being optimistic, one. And I think that'll be against Aberdeen. Right. Um, Because, you know, we've we've played them a few times this season. Played them last night, obviously. And they... We sort of know how to get into Aberdeen's faces a bit, but they always seem to just nick us like they always seem to catch us on the break or we've played mm. so well against them and mm. got nothing for it the majority Aye. of the time but I think um, after playing them last night knowing as well that they're sort of on the way like they've got cup games and stuff coming up Aye. Um, I can see us getting a draw there but 
Rangers will it'll be like a I can't play my mouse, man. Like it's just gonna be I think it's gonna mm. be an onslaught. They were brilliant today. Aye, very good. Um, and then St Johnston they it's always seem to beat us one nil, no matter <laughs> no matter how we, we we could have Ronaldo and Messi in the team and still beat us one nil with a goal from Evie May in the seventeenth minute. So it's um aye. Nah, I think I can optimistically one point, but yeah, I, I think the season's done for us now. We're not mm. getting relegated, and mm. we have a small chance to European football if we finish fifth and Rangers win the cup or Aye. yourselves win the cup. So Aye, I, I, I can see us getting one point. Aye, Owen, oh, yourself, what are you thinking, mate? Uh, well, as Liam said, with, with Aberdeen, Aberdeen are just they're just one of those teams that we just cannot seem to do anything against at all. <laughs> Uh, last season we played them we absolutely played them off the park and I mean like that's the one of the best Livingston performances I've ever seen we got, got beat 2-0 you know it's just one of those sort of classic things so uh, I, I think I think we could probably sneak another draw against them uh, when it comes to Rangers one probably one of the top Livingston things that could ever happen is we beat Rangers <laughs> <laughs> you know like we, we beat Rangers, we end Rangers unbeaten I hope or whatever, so. and then I hope so. And then St. Johnson <laughs> pump us eight nil. You know, like <laughs> you take it you know, away. That's, yeah. oh, that's the type of stuff that would happen, you know. It's like, you know, we've already had our you know six nil pumping. Yeah. But I mean we, we always seem to have like one very, very good result. Um, like I was saying this before, it's like we normally we normally get like a decent doing off a club, you know. So we've had that from Celtic, but like you know, five nil against Hearts and stuff like ah, that. That's right, aye. We always seem to have a good good result, and it looks as though at the moment the best result that we've really had is three nil against against yourselves at Easter Road. So, aye. um, so that was I, a brilliant night like when you beat them five nil. Oh, oh my oh, god, man! That was brilliant. It was, <laughs> it was just like it, like we were in total and utter disbelief. <laughs> that it was even happening. Like, I mean, it was such a weird game as well. Like, I mean, it's not a Hearts podcast. I'm not, I'm going to restrain myself. I'm not going to talk our <laughs> way through the entire game. Uh, but it was such a bizarre game. But I think we we usually have like one sort of good game where we score like four kind of, you know, mm. like we get like a decent 4-0 or 4-1 right. victory. And we haven't had that yet this season. So... Um, I would kind of like to the, the the whole St. Johnson game will be billed as this big revenge game for the Betfred Cup final sort of thing but again I, I think St. Johnson will drop us so um, I think I could realistically see us maybe picking up three points against one of those three teams I don't know who it's going to be against but I could see us pick up three more hope I it's think. Aberdeen for our sake yeah, that'd be nice. nice. <laughs> I, for, for our sake as well, and I hope Aye. we beat them 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, man. That would be good. No, that's good. So I will we'll move on to the last wee bit. Um so we've got a few players here that uh, played for both Hib Hibs and Livy. I'm gonna run mm. through them and just in uh, in five words or less give me your your opinion on them. So we'll start with um he was there for to do the toilet and leave ban and he stokes. Trick. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, and <laughs> he's an absolute savior, man. Actually, actually, wimp couldn't wimp. play on a plastic pitch. Wimp. It's fair. The next one has been mentioned already, but Lee Griffiths. Spectacular. Yeah. Unbelievable. Sorry. Sparktacular. <laughs> hey. uh, <big> sparky himself. <laughs> and that about. <laughs> Please. Please. I know I'm a massive virgin, but I don't need to know knowing it as well. <laughs> Next one is uh, F.A. Ambrose. Oh unpredictable. Hi. <laughs> I know I know it's five words, but it's that's the only way you can describe them as unpredictable. Uh, that's, that's I would say the same. <laughs> uh, just on his day though. Oh, he's he can be unbelievable, but Aye. fucking hell. When he's on an off day, so unpredictable. Owen? Good at times. 
That's that's fair. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was sad he left. I was gutted. He was my favourite player at Hibs. A lot of Hibs fans were raging when he left. Aye. And especially oh, at Derby. And, like, he never even made a single appearance at Derby. No. And then, he, and then signs for Livingston. Uh, that was the most frustrating bit about that was his first game back or first game for Livy was against us in one of the last mm. games before COVID and he was unbeatable that day we couldn't get uh, past him apart from like a, a wee dodge uh, flick at the near post but he was unbelievable that day do you know he was so calm on the ball man I, like we see when we played Europe and that like just so so calm but times were like you'd be watching in, in the stand and you're like just clean it just clean it like <laughs> panicking and he's just like whoa calm down like taking yeah. his time like Big that, cigar out. It's like, it's <laughs> me. There was a game for for Livy at the start of the season against Dundee United at Tannadice and it was when Gary Holt was still in charge and we were so bad. But I think Effie hadn't played and then he brought him back in and he made Shankland look like a Sunday league player. Like I, the obvious, That was when everyone was like, oh, Shankland should be in the squad. And But honestly, just I was, I was surprised that Shankland never left the pitch greeting because it was, <laughs> it was a joy to watch man and as you said it was just that sort of every time he had the ball man I was like oh my god just get rid of it get rid of it <laughs> just just a wee drop of the shooter and that's him he's beat like three players in the middle of the park and he's pinging balls over the top and you're like I love you man then as, soon, as, soon, as soon as Holt left though and Martindale was persisting with him at, at, at centre back he was brilliant because nice. Martindale basically said cut the shit and basically, like, mm-hmm. honestly, see if there was people, there would be people in the crowds with broken noses with how hard he was clearing the ball. As soon as it got anywhere near him, didn't matter where on the pitch he was, he just fucking blutered. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's three, just rid three of it. nil game at Easter Road was the first time that it, when anything came near him, he just booted it out. Aye. And I, I was like, right, we've got a guy who can do both now. Yeah. But then, since then, he's done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the last the, the, the last one that we've got on the list, and there's countless others that I played for both. Um, but Marvin Bartley, what's your thoughts on him? Absolute hero. I think, yeah. Um, it started. This, I remember when we signed him, and I was like, "We've given a three-year deal to forty-eight-year-old man or however old he is," <laughs> and. Yeah, and I was like, nah, he's going to be pish. And then last season, I honestly couldn't believe some of the stuff he was doing. Mm. Um, And then he started this season really badly. And I thought, right, that's him. This is what, that was the Marvin Bartley I thought we were getting. A guy who looked past it, didn't really look interested. But then when uh, Martindale took over, since then, again, he's just been, oh, brilliant. I, nah. And I can see why a lot of Hibs fans were gutted when when they let him go. Mm. Uh, we've still not replaced him. Like he no. was brilliant for us, man. Especially in a derby or against like the old firm or something like that. Like he was just a really like nitty gritty player. Like not afraid to get any of tackles and kind of would stand up tall and would be counted for in that area. Like knew what it meant. Really bought into Hibs and that. So like yeah. when he left, it's just like you just can't replace that, eh? Nah. No. So, well, You're we tried to replace, replace him with Gogic. Aye. Aye, Aye but I think... Gogic, yeah. In terms right. of Gogic, he, he's a good player, but I think I think the difference was, is like, Bartley, he really bought into Hibs, eh? Like, mm. under that Stubbs era. It was like, you could tell he was Hibs through and through, you know, when he played and stuff like that, and we won the cup, and he was at the parade, and, you know, um, he, he was one of those boys that really sort of just became almost like almost a fan yeah uh, or what seemed like uh, when you were watching it you know and he was quite vocal on social media and that as well about you know whenever we beat hearts and he'd put pictures up and can rub it in and stuff like that so uh that that, that sort of team spirit's hard to replace eh? but mm. he's a he was a good player man good player Aye. that um that night that he scored his first goal oh that's right at time castle hearts. oh my god <laughs> even we were like <laughs> giving it 10 times more because we knew because as I one of my pals who's a Hibs fan Callum he rips me all the time because <laughs> we've never had a player that has come through and supported mm. Livingston because we're a young club like aye. no like and aye so but like there's interviews with Bartley even when he's at Livy and he's like oh no I'm a Hibs fan I, I believe green in that and it's 
does it? It's not as sort of annoying as what I imagine it would have been with Chris Boyd and when he was oh, at Kilmarnock and with Rangers and stuff. But, um, <laughs> but nah, it, it's nice knowing. And then when he scored that goal against Hearts, even I was like, fucking get it up, them, man. <laughs> and then I think you were playing County away, but the whole. Ah, yeah, that's right. Was singing a Marvin Bartley song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember but, that. Nah, he, he's brilliant. Love Aye. him. Oh, and uh, what's your? How would you describe Bartley in five words or less? I don't know. I should have been thinking about that rather than. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, good at what he does. Good at what he did. Ah, there you go. Five yeah, five words. Oh, that's <laughs> what he does. He was utter, utter, utter tripe at the start of the season. Um, but for some reason, someone's given him a kick up the arse and he seems to be a wee bit better uh, now. But yeah, yeah, he was he was our player of the month for last month as well, which kind of goes to kind of goes to show. I think you know that just with the improvement that he made over the course of the entire season. Uh, but yeah, good at what he does. Mm. I'll that's good. With that. right. So we've got what we usually get some listener questions. So we've got one that's mainly for us, but we'll ask you guys the same question, but and from a living perspective. So uh, the question comes from Simon McKenzie, and he says that there are always too many excuses when Hibs drop points. And then you just kind of what you think is, do you feel like Livy fans have too many excuses when you drop points? No, our, we've got an opposite issue that whenever we drop points, folk just say, oh, but we were in League One five years ago. Mm. And you're like, well, it's five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> we're not in League One. We're not playing Strand Man anymore. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, we, we sort of tend to, um, we tend to excuse poor results. And I mean, I, I can see where it's coming from, but I think, the first season in the SPL, fair enough. Like we were in League One two years ago. That's fair enough. The club's right. come a long way, but then mm. it's a completely different squad now. It's a squad to play in the Premiership. It's not a mm. League One squad anymore. So it's yeah, yeah. They're like, aye. So for me, we we don't actually make excuses. We sort of excuse the. That's that's sort of the main thing for us. But and then a lot of the. Uh, there's a lot of Livy fans, I say a lot, there's not a lot of Livy fans in general, but there's Livy fans that will sort of, yeah, sort of say that you can't criticise the team because we were in League One once. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's my main gripe with whenever we lose. It's, we can't criticise the team at all. Mm. Oh, and do you agree with that? Would you add anything to it? Uh, Liam pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Uh, but what we also do have as well is a, a, a massive list of scapegoats. Mm. Uh, if Robbie McCrory's in goals, it's Robbie McCrory's fault. If Jet's yeah. playing up front, it's Jet's fault. And to be honest, most of these are actually coming from, from our podcast, if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I, I will, after certain games, like after a... After the Celtic game, you know, I mean, that's, that's a perfect opportunity. To, to, it's like, after you get drubbed 6-0, it doesn't matter. You know, you were, you were always going to get beat by Celtic. There's absolutely no point in sitting back. But, yeah, um, I mean, I saw the, I saw how scrappy the first goal was. I, I, I just switched off the game. I, yeah. never, I never watched the rest of it. Thankfully, I never paid. Well, you couldn't pay for it because it's fucking Celtic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, I basically switched it off and I was like, nah, that's it. And then went to sleep and woke up and... Ah, six, fair play. <laughs> you know, <Aye>. it's, it's <laughs> yeah. But uh, aye, we, we, we tend to always, every season we tend to have a couple of scapegoats, like first season, uh, like down in League One was probably Morgan Neal, for example, who I think played for him at some point. No, he was Motherwell, sorry. Uh, but, you know, every single season we always seem to have one or two scapegoats because it's either one's playing. Yeah. Usually a forward player and or a defender or the goalkeeper um, is usually sort of the scapegoat for us. Um, but when we drop points against, you know, teams like Hamilton or something like that, it, that's when it kind of gripes you because you're yeah. like, we could have won that. Mm. And it's always Aye. in hindsight. It's always like after the game as well. 
when you think, you know, like again that Aberdeen two 0 game, uh, where Aberdeen beat us two 0 but we were phenomenal that day. You could sit there for hours and hours and hours and pick apart that match and say, oh, Sybil should have cleared the ball here and oh. Keegan Jacobs should have, you know, passed at that free kick. So it's all in hindsight. So yeah. it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, aye. Uh, kind of... Just one last question um, from me and Charlie is just if you could sign any one Hibs player from our, our current squad, who would you take? Oh, I think N- Nisbet's too easy, I think. Uh, oh, I've always really quite liked Jackson Irvin, to be honest. Uh, nah, he's, he's, he's a good a player, fan. but I don't know if he'll be there next year. Like, <laughs> he's... Uh, no. So is he only signed for the end of the season? Aye. Thanks, so, aye. There's, it... there's talks that he signed a contract, but it's not out in the open yet, but we'll mm. wait and see what happens with that. Yeah, for me, I would I would probably say him, Mike. He, him and uh, him, Bartley and Sybil. That'd be a crack in the field. Aye. Aye. No, so I would, I would say Irvin for me. Uh, Dre right? Oh, you can have him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> if, he, if he's out of contract at the end of the season, we're probably talking to him anyway. We'll pay. Uh, <laughs> we'll pay you to take him. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's, there's, there are, a, there are a few. Like a few years ago, I would have had the submarine, uh, Scott Allen, mm. but ah, uh, um, yeah, that first there. Yeah, I mean, he kind of, um, he kind of lost his way at Celtic a wee bit. Martin Boyle is probably a, a, a shout as well, but I would probably go for someone a bit more obscure like Kyle McGuinness. Kyle McGuinness? Right. Oh, aye. 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 Uh, aye. Not Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle McGuinness. Josh. Um, because he's one of those sort of decent central midfielders where he can he can literally move from defensive midfield to attacking midfield. Yeah. And I think that's what we're really missing. It's basically we, we plant Pittman behind the striker um, and Pittman now is basically told, now nah, you stay there, you know, whereas McGinnis will be a slightly more mobile version of like Marvin Bartley mm. and Jason Holt, you know, so I th- I'd, I'd go for that someone to be like, I reckon that we could probably make something because he's not really kind of had a, um, a decent start for his Hibs career. No, he, McGinnis, he, but, played, uh, he played like 75 minutes today and he looked all right, but, I think he's just needing game time, eh? So, I mean, I think I uh, think he'll go out on loan in the summer, like. But maybe to yourself, he's, he's one of those type of players that we would, that we could sort of pick up and mm. we'd kind of mould him. To, Aye. to kind of do. Uh, who, who would you take from Lovey? That was. Uh, I mean, I'll I'll leave the obvious FA and Marv out. Um, <laughs> you fucking if you have Rose back. I like. take him back in a flash. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do a swap deal for him and Dre, right? If you want. Uh, <laughs> I'd take it uh, uh, again. Yes, I'd take Craig Sybil. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, um, I think it's probably an obscure one, but I'd take uh, Serrano. I think, I think he'd do all right at Hibs. Um, I would have taken Kieran Brown, but Cardiff recalled him. Um, I thought he looked mm. very, very good in He's the game. Smashing it down there now, especially well. the the two two was it against Celtic at, when the pitch was mm. really snowy. I think. He was, I think he was man of the match. He was that, phenomenal. Like, very, very uh, Again, good. Again, he started off like really bad because we had him for three separate loan spells Oof. and he started off like really bad. And yeah. then like, then he kind of got good and then he went back again. And then we, then we kind of recalled him and he was quite bad. And then he became good and then he got recalled again. And yeah. it just seemed to kind of keep going like that. Um, and Serrano, I don't know what's up with Serrano. I'm guessing he must be injured at the moment. Um I think there was talks apparently of us extending his uh, extending his loan to next season. Um, but I mean, my favourite Jackson Longridge, you know, he's, he's gonna he's mm. gonna have a tough time displacing uh, <laughs> the best left back Aye. that Livingston have. <laughs> I think uh, Longridge is a good player, like definitely. He was really really good. Yes, he's really really stepped up. Um, like Liam hates him. Um, <laughs> see, when when really Liam grows it. his wee beard, they, they honestly Jackson Longridge and Liam are the absolute spitting image of each other. <laughs> uh, but but Jacko's got a better <laughs> pattern than he does. I, I'm um, a much better footballer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I, 
I always kind of rated Jackson Longridge, mm. like even going back down to the to League One and stuff. Aye. But since he's come back, he's really properly. I hate this term, but he properly has kicked on this mm. season. Nah, like, he, he has recently. When he first the first few games he played, I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, why have we got this guy again? Oh, we that got game when him. we had them on free kicks on every, uh, oh, every um, single free kick and it was just going out of the stadium. But since, nah, the past few weeks he's been, he's really stepped up and, yeah, I don't know if Serrano's injured or whatever. Serrano's a bit of a weird one that, again, like, we, we were saying this in our group chat earlier, that Livy hadn't had a consistent player all season. Mm. So they'll either be amazing or utter shit there's no there's no 7 out of 10 it's 10 out of 10 or 4 out of 10 uh, Serrano can buy on his days brilliant he's got a really good delivery um, and he's only scored one goal but he's, he's got a good strike on him as well yeah, he's, um, looked, he's looked good every time I've seen him play I think mm, he would he'd maybe fit in as a squad player for us for sure yeah Nah, hundred percent. Nah, he, he is a good player. He's probably a uh, bit obscure, but I uh, aye, good, good choice. I mean, I was gonna say Dolly Menga as well, but he's obviously not. I I thought Dolly Menga should have been someone we looked at. Eh? And what? Really? <laughs> I, I, really? I, I that guy's more. He's more of an Instagram influencer <laughs> than he is a footballer, man. And he's uh, a terrible <laughs> influencer as well. I, 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 I think he'd be all right, us. I th- I think. Like, see a gate, like, oh my God, it, you've just brought so many memories coming <laughs> back to me. I got rid of them. I got rid of these memories. But, like, I remember saying when we signed him, he, he played that, I think his first game was actually against Hibs, that game mm. I mentioned earlier. We, we won 2 1. And, uh, I mean, he looked all right. And then we started playing against Hamilton, Dundee, um, Motherwell, all the jobbers of the league. And he was. Pish. Then we played Rangers and he was unreal. Mm. Played Hearts, he was brilliant. Played Hibs again, uh, brilliant. Celtic, brilliant. Hamilton, shit. And, and <laughs> he was just like, he just didn't turn up when when it was like teams that he clearly had never heard of. Yeah. Uh, uh, such a strange sign. Nice. Nah, <laughs> so bizarre. I, I, it was but, just so strange for us going from like Ryan Hardy and then Ryan Hardy got injured and then we're just playing this. This guy that I, I can I can only describe him as this guy with hair, like <laughs> it was his hair that kind of you know his, his hair and stepovers. No, <laughs> like that's all it seemed to me that he but was. I, I remember a game against Motherwell. He picked up the ball from the halfway line, and he started running towards Motherwell's like our own goal, and conceded a corner. <laughs> like, I think he actually genuinely forgot what way we were attacking. <laughs> and I was like, how's he done that? Like it was, it was probably one of the highlights of the season, to be honest. But also, just no. Nah, if you wanted Dolly Menga, then you need your head checked, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, Dolly Menga needs his head checked. Like he wanted to go back to Angola, so we sent him to Angola on loan. Nah, I remember you know, that. And like he never even played for an Angolan team. You know what I mean? I he made like five appearances or something like that. And he came back to us, big fanfare. At, I think it was Ross County. It was one of the last games we went to before lockdown. Mm. Big mm. fanfare for the Levy, uh, for the Levy supporters and that. And yeah, man, no, like uh, to be honest, would I have? Would I rather have him or Jet? I mean, it's a very, very close call between the two of them. Mm. Like they're, they're both very similar players, except like one of them can run and yeah. the other one can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Combine the two of them and you've got a player. Actually, you've got a player say. there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Aye, there we are. Uh, in fact, uh, last little segment, we, we started doing this segment oh. last week and basically this is episode number nine for us. So what we've been doing is we've been, each episode we dedicated to sort of a player. So we're building a team. So we started with episode one, we done a goalkeeper. So who's the best Hibs player ever if we're the number one? Then oh, episode yeah. number two, who's the best player everywhere? Uh, uh, number two. I was, two, I was so. thinking of stealing that idea and claiming it as my own. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free, mate. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it again, Charlie. Um, and feel free to jump in with a a, a Livy number nine. Who you think has been Livingston's best number nine? Um, let's see if I can think of a list here, Charlie. 
um, for ourselves, for our Hibs players. Obviously, you've got the likes of uh, um, Gary O'Connor, Stephen Fletcher jumped to mind straight away. Um, Jamie McLaren. Can you think of any other number nines just off the cuff there, Charlie? Jamie McLaren. Did you see he scored five goals the other night in a dark? Aye, against uh, Melbourne. Did you Victory. see that? Aye, aye. <laughs> he was a good aye, player, aye, I, I, mean, liked him. Honestly, I liked him. Aye, he was decent, like. Aye, but aye. it was almost like when, when the goal got tough, he jumped ship. Mm. Uh, it was weird. Aye, he was injured a lot that second time. Uh, Right, mate, I'm trying to get the list up on my phone. I prepared a list here. Sorry, guys. Was it all right? I was um, going to say, Paul, Paul Kane, was he not a number nine, perhaps? Paul I think he was. I think you might be right, mate. See, I, I mean, there was there was a lot of time where, like, I've, I've immediately got my Livingston number nine, um, but this was before squad numbers was actually a thing. Mm. So... Right. <laughs> you know, so... I'll, and again, I'm, you know, when I was sort of... Uh, uh, like growing up as a as a kind of heart supporter, and my my favourite number nine, of course, played for Hearts. Um, but you know, again, there was no there was no sort of squad numbers at that time. It was a few years before that happened. Who's that? I'm not telling you. Who's your number eight? <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. You're right, mate, look at you yet, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that, be De Vries or something like that, man. Uh, we'll run through. <laughs> Some number oh, nines no. here, Charlie. You've got Christian Doidge, Mark McNulty, Jamie McLaren, David Dias, Matt Levicus. Who? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think like uh, oh, Dave. Oh, my union, Dave. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, Grant Holt, Fareed De La Lagu, uh, Rowan Vine, Lee Griffiths, O'Connor, Colin Nish, Stephen Fletcher, Chris Killen, Craig Brewster, Keith Wright. And then that's well before our time, mate. Tony Higgins and all that. Before I was even a, a thought. Nice. Um, Keith Wright was the guy I was thinking of, not Paul. Whatever. Uh, Keith. Keith Wright. I was one of my, one of my dad's favourite saves, so I'll probably was too 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 early for uh, for me to see. Mm. I was too young. Eh? Uh, who are you picking in your team for that list, Charlie? Uh, definitely not Rowan Vine. I'll put that out there because he was horse meat. Uh, I'll... <laughs> I'll go with Stephen Fletcher at number nine because he was really when I started like properly getting into Hibs. Um, right. Sort of that. Uh, that seat, like 2006, seven. I think he was number nine that year or round about then. And that was, I just remember him that CIS Cup final when we beat Kelly 5 1. That's that he was just class. So I'll, I'll, I'll go with I'll yeah, Fletch. That's a good shot, mate. Um, I'm going to go Gary O'Connor. Yeah, I love big guys. I just, he was, just brilliant man, brilliant character in that. Eh? And he was brilliant, uh, decent goal scorer. And that's why I've got to go, Gary. One probably one of my favourites, man. Aye. Right, Livy, famous Livy number nines. Any any shouts, boys? I mean, that's the thing. Like, so Griffiths would probably be one of. I, he used to wear number nine, but that was when you didn't have squad numbers in the championship. So it was just like ah, Alan, right. but he he would always be number nine. Um, Stokesy was your number nine <laughs> for about twenty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, he definitely wouldn't be on the list. Um, uh, he's our he's our golden boy. Aye. I think uh, Mark. I remember <laughs> Mark McNulty was number nine for us as well, and I remember he Aye. had a really good season. Um, yeah, I would I would probably maybe say we've not had anyone. Over the past few years in the Premiership, Ryan Hardy was number nine. He was all right, um, but I would I would probably say Mark McNulty for the sort of modern day squad number. Played for us era. as well, I played for us as well. Been, like yeah. surprised oh, he was, up at United. Yeah, he's he's, he's a bit of a weird one. Like I, I work, uh, a, a guy I worked with, uh, he was a big Coventry City fan, and I absolutely loved McNulty. And then like, he scored about 25 goals for them and he was a goal scorer for us. I mean, he's like our third or fourth highest ever scorer. Wow. Um, but yeah, he just it never really seems to work out for him. <laughs> like, yeah. Anywhere. I mean, he was all right with Hibs, was he not? He was sort of, he got into the Scotland squad. Aye, he, was, he was all right, aye. Aye, yeah. done all right. Uh, but no, I think modern day number nine, with the squad number, name on the back, and I would probably say him. 
Well, for me, well, I think I think I'm going to have to sort of go. Uh, there's there's going to be three in here. I think for me, uh, the first the first Livingston number nine I remember was Jason Young. Uh, he was just one of those mm-hmm. players that like nowadays, no one knows what he does. Like he never, I think he went from us to Stranra, Um but he, I just remember one of the first Livingston games I ever went to at Clifton Hill, it must have been around about 95, 96, and he scored a hat trick. And I was like, Dad, what's a hat trick? People keep talking about this. What's a hat trick? <laughs> um, so that's going sort of right the way back. Um, my favorite, as I sort of mentioned, sort of teased you with my favorite ever number nine, who also did wear number nine for Livingston as well. It's the King of Hearts. John Robertson. Uh, Ace of Hearts. Of it. Oh, Robo, the video, the video was, oh, was Ace of Hearts. Was it the Ace of Hearts or the uh, King of Hearts? I thought it was the King of Hearts. Nah, we, uh, we, and, we had this we had this video of John Robertson goals in our house. It was pretty much the only video that we would watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in terms of uh, in terms of like modern day, uh, I think it's it is actually quite hard to see. I mean, again, there's there's loads of decent choices like Liam Buchanan. Um, I began it was decent. Ian Russell was an absolute foot, but again, these are kind of before the sort of set squad numbers as such. Uh, Kenny Duker, oh, I um, <laughs> as well was uh, was a number nine. Amazing. Great guy, great guy. Shite, according to Liam, but a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of my one of my favourite ever stories was uh, uh, Kenny Duker had signed for us on like the Tuesday morning. We were playing East Fife that night, so I said to Liam, "Let's go up to East Fife tonight and watch the game." Kenny Duker's just signed. No, Kenny Duker's shite. Scored a perfect hat trick that same night. <laughs> <laughs> If it makes you feel any better, John Robertson was the manager of East Fife as well at the time. That does. Uh, <laughs> pump them. Uh, I'd, I'd probably say, I, I, to, to be honest, I'd probably agree with Liam. Mark McNulty was one of those one of those strikers that as soon as he got a ball at his feet, anywhere near anywhere near the goal, it was either going in or it was going close. So probably Mark McNulty in uh, yeah, modern yeah. time. Quality. Right, I think I'll finish up with one one last question. This is this has got to be probably Shan Potter from myself, right? But L- Livingston, Tony Macaroni Stadium, named after food. If you were to rebrand Easter Road after uh, sort of relating it to food, what would you call it? Oh, God, man, that is tough. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. I didn't like well, I'll, I'll I think of any you. shite food. Aye. Oh, I could think it was Easter egg road, but that's terrible. Eh? <laughs> I, like, yeah, <laughs> that, that was the first thing that popped into my head, and I was like, oh, no, nah, everyone would think of that. <laughs> uh, nah, I don't know. I, nah, I'd probably, <laughs> probably see Easter egg road as well. I, I, <laughs> I would I would go a, a wee bit more obscure, because you guys rate the yellow uh, away tops in that. We do. Uh, I'd, I'd probably say uh, the Chiquita Banana Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> or I think it's I think it's Chiquitas <laughs> like that that weird banana aye. make. Uh, uh, that would be aye. Aye. Like yellow aye. top with a with a big blue Chiquita <laughs> banana sticker on it. Aye. 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 Easter egg stadium for me. Aye. Pretty aye. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> aye, no, spaghetti had's a good one, like. Oh, good I love one. that. Love I like that. the spaghetti had. <laughs> it's a good uh, part. That that was that was probably some great part of there. Like <laughs> we've had some absolute minters of stadium names over the course of the years, though. Yeah, I remember one one of the uh, when it was was it ever named the Motorola Stadium? Is that right? No, or was it just sponsored by Motorola? No, we were just sponsored by Motorola. Aye. Motorola were based Aye. in Livingston for a long time. That's right. Because we were, we were known we as Silicon had a... Glen through here, you know, like Silicon Valley over, oh, over uh, <laughs> in California. We were known as Silicon Glen over here. Ah, yeah. right. I remember, um, I can't actually remember the game, but one of my first memories of going to Livingston away was my mum and dad used to take in students. Well, one of their pals used to take in students and they didn't have enough space for them. So it's basically a Spanish guy living in our house for a couple of months, right? And he was a Real Madrid fan. And we were like, well, we had Hibs supporters, and it was like fell on one of the weekends that uh, he was free, and we said, "Well, Hibs are playing L- Livingston, but we'll go through." And we went through for an away day, and I swear to God, it was the worst game of football <laughs> I have ever ever seen. And he came with us, eh? so he was used to watching Real Madrid that, and he came to watch Hibs Livingston, and I think it was one nil Hibs. I think Samama scored like the last kick of the ball, but uh, I 
a wee story. Well, see, that, that's <laughs> the thing, like the the like touching on the Motorola thing, like Motorola, they were based in, I think it was Bathgate, and uh, but it went out of business in like two thousand and three, but we still had Motorola on the seats up until oh, wow. about two years ago. <laughs> like, they just couldn't afford to change them. Like, no, one, no one else wanted to spot it. So, like, Ma- folk- Martindale went round and unscrewed all the seats. <laughs> <laughs> See, like at the back, it's now Nordan or something like that. They're right. just the repurposed right. seats. <laughs> when it used to be, used to be uh, it's mental. Absolutely uh, mental. Like, like, I would have folk saying, like, are Motorola even a thing anymore? Like, why do they still have Motorola? Yeah, right. No idea. No idea. <laughs> So, uh, but nah, I think uh, we've had a few dodgy stadium names, but I was embarrassed the the Tony Mac at first, but <laughs> we've embraced it, eh, and it's it is what it is, and it's got us a few it's good, a few good. bob like gets us free match meals, you aye. know, for like the team and well, that the team, not for aye. Us. Yeah, <laughs> not for not for the podcasters. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hopefully, in the future. To be honest, I wouldn't eat there anymore if they paid me. <laughs> well, that, well that brings us to a close for uh, episode 9 of the pod Le- uh, Owen and Liam thanks so much for coming on it's been nah, great cheers for having us man oh, for having brilliant. Us. Great, uh, great to chat Hibs and Livy and um, I think we're pretty similar in terms of beliefs for our clubs as well so nice to see aye. that as well and nice to see local supporters as well uh, so exactly aye. On, aye. but just a reminder for the listeners that this podcast has been sponsored by high b pins and if you use the code soh podcast you can get 10 percent off on the website and uh, we'll put all the links in the youtube and on the spotify as well but until next time cheers